everybody, it's Oklahoma Lieutenant Governor Matt Fennell uh, coming to you with another episode of our A Look at Oklahoma's Career Tech System. Uh, as I say all the time, we are already top 10 in an area in Oklahoma. We're on a good list, a good top 10 list, and that is our Oklahoma Career Tech System. If we're ever going to close a skills gap uh, in this country, I believe our career tech systems are going to be in the middle, in the center of that solution. Uh, and today, uh, I've got uh, really the, the pleasure and the honor of uh, interviewing Eddie Shepard, uh, who uh, has gone through our career tech system, gone through a program here inside the state of Oklahoma. So Eddie uh, is, he is a student who completed the advanced manufacturing program uh, and is currently working on his inst inst instrumentation and process control uh, technician certification at Francis Tuttle uh, Technology Center in Oklahoma City. Francis Tuttle, one of the many, again, great uh, career tech uh, systems that we have, uh, locations that we have across the state of Oklahoma. What brought you to Francis Tuttle? So for me, um, I'm from Louisiana originally. Uh, there's a lot of oil and gas and chemical down there. And I wanted to get into a field called gas chromatography, which is a, a very specialized piece of instrumentation process control. And uh, they have a couple of programs down south that I would have had to have moved to to go down there full time. And they're um, very expensive programs. And there's really no help. There's no veterans help. They don't take the GI Bill. So it's very hard to get into that unless you walk into it with something, you know, collateral. Um, so Francis Tuttle, uh, there were two big draws for me to come here. One is, I'm from the outside of Shawnee, about an hour away, um, so it was close. And number two, they have an amazing uh, veterans setup. Um, so we can come here pretty much for free because of uh, the leadership board of Francis Tuttle and the way they've arranged their program. Well, so that that is certainly a message then that needs to be delivered delivered to veterans then across uh, the country Absolutely. and the world, I'm assuming, right? It, it blows my mind how many local veterans in Oklahoma City have no clue that this resource is right here and there's four or five campuses around the city. Wow, well, that's another reason that we're uh, we're doing this series is to, to tell that story. We want moms and dads with eighth graders knowing about career tech, but we also wanna, we, we wanna know this amazing veterans population that we have in Oklahoma, one of the largest veteran populations in the country, right here in Oklahoma. Uh, to, to tell your story, I think is gonna be uh, really valuable to them as they're looking to re-enter the workforce because right. that's essentially what you were looking to do right re-entering the workforce absolutely it, it's weird like you, you get a skill set in the military but not every job in the military directly correlates to a, a civilian job you know guys that were police officers can become civilian police officers um, not saying there's not a step there there is but guys that were in very special career fields aviation for instance if you're not a pilot and you were a mission operator on some very specialized piece of equipment, there's no civilian version of that. So what do you do to translate your skill set? And a program like this is a great stepping stone because you walk in with experience and you have the intrinsic things that most employers want. You just need to add that one little thing to it to make you more marketable in the career field you're trying to go into. That's good. So tell me more about uh, advanced manufacturing. Again, people that are watching this, that are going to be listening to this, this is one of the fields that career tech offers. So again, you don't have to go to a four-year university uh, to, to get this certification to then go immediately right into the workforce and make a lot of money. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about advanced manufacturing how do I, how, and, and how long did that program again take? So um, the way Francis Toto does it, um, the programs are self-paced. So they're listed as a number of hours, and I'm not, I don't want to make those numbers up. I don't remember them. Um, I'm trying to, I want to say it was, it's about eight months for the first one if you went the full time and a little less than that for instrumentation process control. Um, but the, they're being self-paced. So honestly, I did all of advanced manufacturing in a couple of months because I came full time, I applied myself and I, I, I did the work, you know, I was, I was trying to get into the job market. I wasn't trying to come to school full time, right. um, which is the, another asset of this program is if you need the full period of time, slow down. If something's challenging, you know, take the time you need to, to focus on it. But on the other side of that, there's some of the stuff, especially me, I had a, a very strong electronics background. A lot of the first couple of uh, books you go through, what was, wasn't even a refresher. I mean, it was stuff that I is ingrained in my brain. So I blew right through a lot of it, but then there's more stuff that, that is very specific 
to the advanced manufacturing, um, some of the safety stuff was different. I worked on airplanes. This is more like a, an industrial type electronics. It's a little different. So there were some things that, you know, I had to slow down and, and go through a little more in depth. But a lot of things, it was, it was almost a direct transfer and just kept going with it. What skills did you learn? Like, tell me, give a few examples of a few of the skills that you learned. Okay, um, I, I think the easiest way for me to approach that would be, um, so say like a high school student that was interested in coming. So if you came here and you didn't know the difference in the, the types of screwdrivers or what a wrench is versus a ratchet, you get all of that. So you start with basic hand tool skills, um, how to safely use tools, how to identify different types of pliers and snips and that thing. Then you go into electronics, um, which is you know how to safely wire a house. Uh, I mean, this is an industrial application of that, but this would be a good starting point for somebody that wanted to go residential because you learn the, the basic, you learn the OSHA safety, you learn how to safely work with electricity. Um, you learn the terminology that goes along with that, and fuses and breakers and different types of disconnects and motor starters and virtual frequency drives and all those little pieces that are very industry specific. Um, you learn all of that terminology, um, which is a big step towards going into that because most places want to hire somebody. They don't expect you to be, you know, a 10 year experienced technician. They do expect you to know what you're looking at when you show up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's good. So you're furthering your edge. So you went through that program. You, you, you did it fairly, you know, uh, fairly quickly, I guess you could say. Were you being courted by an employer when you were going through that initial advanced manufacturing class? Because I know right now, you know, you're, conf- you're furthering your education with a more specialized, you know, cert- certification with this instrumentation and process control, also something you're doing uh, at Francis Tuttle. But were you being courted by a company when you were going through that initial? Um, okay. It was, it's had a, I mean, uh, lightning strikes more than once for me with this whole deal, like getting into the program, um, avoiding the COVID stuff and being able to get in and go to work. Cause a lot of guys kind of got delayed a little bit just because of the, what was going on. Um, I was able to get in, get the education part knocked out. I was planning on taking the instrumentation and process control course and then going look for employment. Uh, the oil and gas industry here is big. It, the, I, I had known that industry in Louisiana was really kind of more where I was steering. And um, in between, like some people came in one day just to tour the campus. What can Francis Tuttle teach our employees? Um, they spoke to me at lunch. Uh, they came back that afternoon and made a, uh, an official offer. I mean, you know, it, it happened that fast. And it was uh, a, a very, very good offer. Yeah. Um, that's TGW. That's, uh, yep. you know, it's, that's my current employer. So, and uh, just to give you an idea of what this brings. So I'm going into a career field that doesn't really use instrumentation and process control, but because I was already in the program, my employer's like, yeah, finish. Um, so, I mean, mm-hmm. they're enabling me to come and finish that, although it's not necessarily a skill set they particularly need um, because number one, they like the fact that you're trying to further your education. They like the fact that you're motivated enough to try and do the extra stuff. Um, and that's something that I think Francis Tuttle in that program in particular really is good about. The, excuse me, the teachers are very accommodating. The scheduling is very accommodating for people who, you know, um, quite a few of the adult students that have been in class with me get jobs halfway through. They're still coming to finish. They're, they're you know, they're trying to do nights. They're coming on the days they can. And the schedule, the timing is flexible enough to allow that, which is a huge asset. Your average college lockstep four-year program you're not going to be able to do that. Yep. Well, and again, I, I, you're you're kind of um, describing what uh, one of my my previous interviews. Again, you had a company, a private sector company, come to the campus uh, right. to to look at these classes, the students that were in those classes, uh, and and were provided an opportunity to get a job uh, being on that campus. I, I think that is um, it. It doesn't work that way on college campuses as much um, from from what we uh, from what we have seen, and and so I, again, it's 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 a pretty pretty special story, and again, I think it's something in the uh, that is that is very unique to our Oklahoma career tech system. I absolutely agree. I have lots of friends that got out um, of the military and then tried go into a program, and you know, use your GI Bill and. You know, that's great. You earned that. That's an entitlement that we have. You should use it. It's a great program. But guys who are getting out that have families, they don't have four years to wait to go to work. Yeah. So it's very difficult. And you I mean, it's uh, that's not really what this video is about. But I mean, using the GI Bill part time is not the proper way to use the GI Bill. 
yeah. you know, so there's something that this offers. Um, and I guess that's a big selling point. You, you ask, I guess we kind of skipped over a little bit, the, the general idea of the advanced manufacturing program. Um, the high school kids that come out of that program can get jobs uh, in the, the mid twenties to low 30 per hour price range. Like that's a, that's pretty good for a 19 year old that's, you know, came here for two years in high school to walk out in the job market with a job like that. Like that's quite a bit, quite a bit above minimum wage. <laughs> Absolutely. You're not going to make that too many places in the food industry that I know. No, you're of. Not. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's right. That, that kind of gives again, parents, kids watching this, listening to this kind of an, a, a, a a real world example, again, just with that advanced manufacturing certification coming out of high school, what you could make again, you could complete you could that get program a in yeah. high school right. and literally graduate high school and start work that summer at, at that kind of number. That's pretty that's, incredible. It, it absolutely is. Uh, what have you enjoyed the most about your time uh, at Francis Tuttle? For me personally, there's two things. So um, cleaning on my background a little bit in the Air Force, I was an in-flight instructor. So I did a lot of instructing. There was a lot of hands-on and a lot of, hey guys, come here, we're gonna figure this out. Um, here, you know, it is individual enough that you can lockstep, you can do your own thing and you can go through the program in a bubble if you really wanted to. But the, the way the tech floor is set up, uh, I wish we had like a demonstration I could show you the tech floor. The benches are all next to each other. So, I mean, when you're out there and you're struggling, a guy who just went through that two or three weeks before you, or in my case, like they're guys, you know, I'm, I'm six months ahead of some of those people. And I'm able to walk over there and be like, hey, man, you look like you're uh, having, a, having a moment. You know, we do to help. Yeah. So I mean, you, you get the instructor's attention, but you also have your peer group that's here with you. And I think that's something else that you don't always get, you know, unless you get a group assignment in college, which is oftentimes more a burden than an asset. You know, here, having that ability to lean on people that kind of just went through that, that know that a little better than you, um, that's a huge asset. And I think the second thing that you get here that you, you don't get, we kind of touched on, um, like uh, the two instructors, I'm going to name drop them, uh, Mr. Matt Maynard, and Mr. Mike Inking. They they know the people in the industry in this area. So they are an asset that you just don't find anywhere else. I mean, you're not only getting an education, you kind of have a job placement service. Yeah. Um, you apply yourself, you build a resume that, that looks halfway decent, that, and they can help you with that next step, which is finding that employment, which is something that I don't think you really get most other places. I didn't get that in either of the colleges I went to before I was here. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's a huge asset to say, like Mr. Maynard encouraged everybody, hey, go to the oil and gas expo, rub elbows with the industry that you're trying to get into. Yeah. Um, we did something similar to that. We had an advisory board meeting. We brought people in from every sector you can imagine, from food handling, materials handling, FedEx, Amazon, um, oil and gas people that are local, uh, even some people that are in uh, like building automation and putting in security systems and automating you know, when you walk in, the lights come on kind of stuff. Uh, the application is just so broad out of this course. You even have robots now. Like we have a FUNAC robot and a universal robot on the tech floor. Nice. Uh, I mean, that's that's getting into completely different sets. The medical field uses some of that stuff. Car manufacturing uses some of that stuff. I mean, there's just such a wide application that you can branch into from the different things you get out of the blocks in this program. It, it's it's, it's incredible how broad it is, yet you get enough information to walk out and guys are passing like employer testing to not start at the bottom of the food chain. They're starting at tech twos, tech threes, which is $10 an hour bonus yeah. as a 19 or 20 year old because they applied themselves when they were in high school. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little jealous, to be honest. They didn't have anything like that in Louisiana when I was graduating in, you know, in the early 2000s. That didn't exist. Yeah, we, we didn't well, get advanced placement courses. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it it exists in Oklahoma, and, yeah. and again, that this is why we're telling these stories. Uh, and and I really liked what you, you know, the 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 attention that your teachers can give to. Again, this isn't this isn't like a a a, a college course where you have two or three hundred kids sitting in, you know, oh, like in the bleacher somewhere, right? I, which you know, there's classes that are certainly smaller than that, but I remember the classes that you know oh. you you're in a huge auditorium somewhere uh, and the networking. I mean, the networking that, that you're able to do at career tech because teachers uh, know employers and can Absolutely. connect, help connect the dots for students. Certainly that helped you quite a bit. And, and I mean, like I said, my situation, it, I, everybody likes to think they're the unique, you know, the special butterfly in the room. But I mean, the fact that those guys walked into the tech floor to ask the question, what can Francis Tuttle do for us as an employer 
to end with, well, we got a guy here that's, you know, doing pretty well in the course. He might, he might fit a, a role you need filled. Um, now TGW, like two of my coworkers, they sent them here from the company mm-hmm. to get that training to put them at an entry level tech position. You know, now there's a relationship. We've done other training um, like NFP 70, which is uh, like art flash and it's a industry specific safety training. Okay. We all came back over as a group and did that through Francis Tuttle. So, I mean, that relationship you build isn't something that just like, oh, I got a job. I'm done with it. Right. The network is still there. The support, the background of that, it still exists. You know, so, I mean, TGW has they're building another facility in Kansas and they're talking about potentially trying to send students down here for this course. So now that network has grown even more and you've got guys all over the industry like that, that have those strings that go back to these programs. That's a big deal. You know, I mean, that's a, somebody says, Hey, I need somebody. These are the guys they're asking to fill those spots. Yeah. That that's that. I mean, that that's the connection that those are the connections that, yeah, we're trying to make. So, you know, tying this up here, what would you say, you know, we ask every, certainly everybody that we're interviewing here, what would you say to someone who is considering uh, uh, enrolling in our Oklahoma career tech, in an Oklahoma career tech program? Uh, so my focus was on, I kind of had an go, end goal and I ended up going a completely different direction. So I think my answer to that would be twofold. One is, if you're thinking about it, you come to a campus tour. They're very open to letting you see the program that you're going to look at. Um, I've done a couple of walks around the tech floor with with people that were interested that they just weren't, man, is this for me? What can I do? You know, I kind of want to do this and I don't know if that's the right program. You know, if you want to get into automotive, advanced manufacturing is not where you should be. Go to the automotive program. Right. Um, so there's a little bit of that. Um, so I would say, you know, don't be shy to come and walk around, see what you're going to learn. That's part of what this is for, is to let you come in and see what you're going to be getting into. Um, and number two would be stop dragging your feet. Um, because the the programs are here. Uh, And I know my case was unique because of the deal they have with the veterans at at this school. But I mean, there's there's aid out there to help people. Um, If you need help, come ask the question, because if you don't and you just assume you're not going to get help, you're hurting yourself. These programs are here, which I think is probably the reason we're doing this project. You want to advertise, there is help. There's accessibility to this to get you where you're trying to go. Um, don't be bashful. Ask for the help. Call the resources. That's what they're there for. Use them. Yep. You know, Eddie, think, I, I just uh, really have enjoyed this. Uh, your story is, is is a true Oklahoma proud kind of story. And, and uh, again, uh, uh, we're so thankful that, you know, you chose Oklahoma. You chose to come back after your, uh, after your service to this country. Uh, we're, we're so thankful that uh, our Oklahoma career tech system uh, could could help you achieve again uh, dreams that you have, and and we certainly hope that you you know we, you continue to build your career, raise a family here, stay in Oklahoma. That's what we want for you. So uh, we cannot thank you enough for for joining us uh, on this episode of our again telling that Oklahoma career tech story. Uh, I think your story is one that uh, needs to be told uh, across our 77 counties. So thank you for joining us today.